Everybody and welcome back to our studios. So our next object is pretty special. We actually never really bring this out at all um, and you can see one of the reasons why. Um, so this is our traditional Japanese tea ceremony set and as you can see just by looking at it, it has many different parts. Some of the parts are here in this wooden tea caddy and some of the parts are here in the storage box. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over each of the different types of parts and kind of explain what they are for. Now, this is something that you often don't see very much, um, like at all. Um, it's a very, the tea ceremony is a very long um, traditional process. And I will be sure to leave a link in the description below of the video so you can go and actually watch. Um, there's some really well documented videos on YouTube that show the tea ceremony process from start to finish. And it's one of those things where you almost have to watch it and it's a lot easier to understand and to enjoy while watching it than me trying to explain it. So let's look at our object. So like I mentioned, this is a caddy of some sort. It actually has a lid on it that goes on at the front and that you would carry it, um, you'd put it on like this and you would carry it from this, um, this handle here. And it kind of reminds me of these old Japanese medicine boxes. They kind of have that same kind of look where they have the front panel that comes off and then people would carry them on their backs. So let's go over all of these. And this is not necessarily going to be in, in the order that they would use them during the tea ceremony, but I'm just kind of going down the line of where they're stacked in the caddy. So let's start with this very front here. So this is a drawer. So I'm gonna carefully, usually this is all packed together. So I'm gonna carefully pull out all of these. So in this top drawer here, we have two of our smallest objects. So we have this right here. This is a spoon. This is actually used to scoop out the, um, the dry tea that you're going to be using for your tea ceremony. Typically, the tea that they would normally use would be matcha or green tea. And then this is called a chakin, and this is a piece of cloth that's usually made out of hemp. And I'll show you what this is for. This is typically to wipe the rim of the glass in between um, guests because a lot of the guests tend to sip out of the same cup so that you would have to clean up the rim, rim when you're done with it. Okay, let's set that aside. So speaking of glass or cup, we have our two cups here. They're two different styles, but they serve the same purpose. This is called a chawan, and it's basically known as the tea bowl. And I keep saying cup because a lot of people think of tea and tea cups. And um, that's what they are, they are cups, but they really are more of these like mini bowls, but you drink your tea out of this. And it's kind of interesting to think of it that way because there's no handle on it and no reason why it would be seen as a way to drink liquid. It almost looks like something you would put food in instead. So there's two different types of them. Um, they both serve the same purpose, but they have two different designs. So there's this one, which is the blue and green and, and brown one which has more of kind of an earthy tone. And then there's this one that's a little bit more fancier. Um, this has a separate part in it, which we'll get to in a minute. So this one has a little more of like a creamy look to it with um, some designs on them. So the reason why I mentioned that these both have um, two different designs is technically when the tea ceremony was first started, um, Again, these were used for utilitarian purposes, a lot, um, similar to the Netsuke figures, where people were only using them to drink tea. So there was no really a need to make them pretty, I guess. When we think of ceramics and people who make sculptures, we think of really um, beautiful sets of bowls and glasses and silverware. But um, a lot of the artists would just kind of make these these chawan or these bowls out of these clay coils and then they would just throw them into the kiln not having a care of like what the temperature was or the types of things involved. So because of that, um, ash from the kiln would actually melt and drip down onto the tea bowls. So they would come out with these, these like warped designs where the bowls would, every time a bowl was, it was created, it would be unpredictable. So it might have little speckles on it from the ash. The bowl might be a little like tipped to the side, um, but it actually kind of makes sense because there is a Japanese term that is called wabi-sabi and that is finding beauty and perfection. So I will put a picture in our video, but I kind of like the idea of the old way of making these bowls where they're not perfect, but you can still use them. But of course, 
as we know later on in light, um, just how, how the Netsuki figures were collected by foreigners who were coming to Japan as pieces of artwork. The Chawan, or the tea bowls, were also seen as collector's items. So when the tea ceremony became more popular, people that were artisans decided, we're going to try to make things a little bit more nice and try to make, uh, I guess, prettier designs. So now when you see tea bowls, a lot of them, you can still find ones that are, have the traditional design. Those tend to be, there's called a design that's called Raku. And they tend to be actually more high in value now and really hard to get your hands on. And they're usually really expensive because those artists are still making them tr the traditional way as opposed to some of the newer ones that are um, seen as not, not quite as valuable and more readily available. So that is what you're going to be drinking your tea out of. Oh, and since I have the tea bowl, I'll show you. So this is your cloth. Remember I mentioned you wipe it. So when after you drink your tea, so you're drinking your tea, you take the cloth and you go across the room like this. So that's what that's used for. So I mentioned this one had a little separate part. So this is a little piece right here. This is actually for your ladle. So I will show you that in a minute when we get to our ladle. So set those aside. So this right here is just a container. It doesn't really have a special name, um, but it's just a large container probably for storing um, tea. But that brings me to these guys over here. Um, these guys right here that are called Natsume, and these are for storing powdered tea, because the tea typically comes in a powdered or dry tea leaf form. So these almost look like little makeup containers, but you can see they are, this one's pretty tall, and it's orange, and it's just, it's just hollow inside, and you just store your tea in there. And I like this one. This one has a, it looks like a dragon, a dragon design. And again, you open it up, and there's room to store your tea. So you can store your tea in these as well. So these are called Natsume. And then right here, this is something you, you use at the very end of the tea ceremony. So this is called a kensui. And again, it looks like just this giant bowl. But this is actually supposed to be a bowl. So what this is for um, is actually for the wastewater. So what I mean by that is that once the tea ceremony is complete, all of these chawans need to be washed. And so once they're washed, all the water that, had, was, that was dirty and was used inside of here to be washed needs to be dumped out somewhere. So it's dumped out into the kensui. Um, we only have one. I don't know if during a tea ceremony you would have more than one. Maybe you have several different, maybe you have four tea bowls all together. Maybe you need four of them for, so each one has its own individual one. But that's what this is for. Um, it's got kind of a bigger bowl. Speaking of the tea, you're going to need a way to brew your tea. So we don't have one in our collection, but typically in a tea ceremony you will also find a um, a kettle of sorts, usually it has a handle, um, a side handle, and then you tip it like this and pour it um, into, your, into your dry leaf teas. Um, you also have um, something that's like a, it's called a brazier, and basically it's a way to light a fire underneath the kettle. So it stands up tall, and then you put the kettle on top of it. We don't have those in our collection, but that'd be something that'd be nice to have eventually to pair with everything. Okay, so remember how I mentioned the, there's a ladle rest? Well, you have your ladle, which is called a hishaku, and this is to ladle in your water. So you take your water and then you ladle into your kettle. And you don't want to just put it on the ground because that doesn't look good. So just to lay it on the table. So what you do is you have this little guy and it's a rest. So it's right here. I don't know. Let me move these bowls out of the way so you can see. So you have your little rest here and you put your ladle just like that. Think of um, kind of like a chopstick rest too or something to if you have a spatula or when you're cooking something on the stovetop, sometimes you have probably like a soup spoon rest and you put your, your um, spatulas or your big serving spoons on them. It kind of works the same way. So you have that. I'll leave that there because they're supposed to go together. And then the other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a whisk. So when you have your matcha or your, um, your dried green tea, um, it's going to come out, like I mentioned, in a powder. And once the, it goes in there, it's going to go into your cup. And you're going to need a way to whisk up the powder and the water and the hot water together. So you get the whisk. And this is how, this is not just a tea ceremony um, aspect. This is just how you make green tea in general and maybe other teas as well. So if you ever want to make your own at home, a lot of people will buy green tea kits. And they typically come with the powder, which we actually have a can of powder here. They usually come with the powder, a bowl, and a whisk. So once it goes in there, you whisk it, you whisk it around until it gets this kind of frothy, foamy look to it. So there we go. I'm going to put this back. And let's see. I think those are all the parts of the Japanese tea ceremony kit. Um, thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about um, some of our Japanese objects. And as I mentioned, I will include uh, plenty of close-ups of some of the smaller objects, as well as some links to some videos so you can learn more about 
um, the culture and the significance of Japan and the Japanese art of the tea ceremony. Thanks for watching.